to go over this uh, this chart, which we saw in Rob Knight's uh, TED Talk. And the TED Talk, of course, is not just for um, scientists and, and science students, but it's for the general public. And so if you will compare this to what you saw in the talk, you'll notice that it doesn't even have the axes labels in the talk. That's because this is a really advanced kind of statistical analysis. So to explain it, it's pretty complicated, but I want you to be able to look at it and at least know what you're looking at, if not in particular how this graph was made. So this type of analysis is a principal components analysis. That's why we see the PCs on the axis. So the PC stands for principal components. Um, and the principal components here um, are composed of groups of microbes. And so the tricky thing about a principal components analysis and a principal components uh, chart is that you don't just have one thing on each axis. So we're used to seeing maybe time on one axis and then, I don't know, um, amount of gas produced or the magnitude of color on another axis. But for this, we're looking at groups of microbes. So maybe um, a certain type of bacillus and a certain type of serratia and um, some kind of lactobacillus uh, on this axis and then on this other axis another group of microbes and so it's probably not just you know a handful of microbes it's um, tens or dozens or maybe even hundreds of microbes I'm not exactly sure and the percentages here a higher percentage means that there's a better connection um, between the groups of components that make up the two axes. So that all sounds kind of um, complicated, and it is, but we don't necessarily need to know all of that in order to understand this chart, or this graph. So what we want to pay attention to here are two things, the colors and the groupings of the dots. So the colors are the independent variable. The colors are where these samples were taken. So the orange, for example, is uh, from the mouth. The uh, red is uh, microbes that were taken from the nose. And then we can see that, for example, the microbes that were sampled from the mouth tend to group together. So, or rather the samples that were taken from the mouth tend to group together. So all the samples from the mouth uh, have similar microbial communities. So they have similar members, which makes sense because the mouth is a very specific kind of environment. So only specific microbes are gonna grow in there. In the nose samples, however, we see that there's a lot of mixing between the nose, the skin, um, the urogenital, and some of the nasal samples even are grouped with the oral samples and the gastrointestinal tract. What does this mean? Well, the nasal samples are samples that include microbes that you're breathing in or that, you know, your nasal hairs are catching and preventing you from breathing in. And so that means that they are microbes that are in the environment, which could include microbes that are from your food and are gonna end up in your gastrointestinal tract or microbes that are on your skin, um, <clears throat> which might be transferred to your nose when you, know, you scratch your nose. So I think that's a really good example and that's our takeaway here is that when you see a bunch of dots grouped together, that means that there are similar species of microbes, not just a single species, but groups of species that are shared between the dots in that area. And the colors, again, are from wh are where we took that sample, or where they took that sample. <clears throat> so again, it makes sense that the community of microbes uh, that we see in the mouth uh, are kind of set apart, and they're distinct from the microbes that we see in the urogenital tract. Um, we don't share a lot of microbes there. Um, we don't share a lot of microbes between the mouth and our intestinal tract. 
um, <clears throat> even though, you know, obviously our uh, intestinal tract starts at the mouth, but most of those microbes cannot survive the trip and they're happy living in our mouth. So, you know, the microbes that are living on your teeth and causing plaque, they're not going into your stomach or your intestines. So again, that's the takeaway from this type of graph, and I hope you find that helpful.